Oh, all right then, let's pick the bones out of this one. Yo, what's going on people? Welcome back to Football Therapy with me, your host, Jan. I hope you're all doing well. Mate, I really do hope that. Chelsea won, Aston Villa won in a keenly contested Premier League six-pointer. Oh. Off the bat, if you looked at this result, Chelsea versus Aston Villa won all at home at Stamford Bridge, historically and inherently you'd think, oh, awful, terrible, and yes, not ideal, but you have to take into context the current situation, the dismal performance that Chelsea put in against Arsenal, how Aston Villa had won four games on the trot without conceding a goal in nine hours plus until Chelsea scored a goal against them. They're flying high in high confidence. Chelsea are the opposite, but Chelsea put in a much better performance here against what is a very decent side in high confidence at the moment. So we're gonna get into it. The player performances, the implications and everything. Do consider subscribing to Football Therapy if you are new to the channel because there's daily content, of course, regarding a Chelsea football club and you might dig it, so consider subscribing. If you want to do me a favour and cheer me up after a relatively frustrating performance, please do drop a like on the video, it helps me out a lot, mate. Alright then, let's get into this match preview. So like I said, one all at Stamford Bridge, goals from Olivier Giroud in the first half and El Ghazi in the second half. A really tight contested game. I know I said it at the top of the video, but it's important that I say it again. Aston Villa aren't mugs. They're playing decent flowing football. They've got good chemistry, good players. I granted they didn't get much rest, but they didn't look like they needed it. They weren't that gassed out. They played well. I'll be keen to get everyone's thoughts and opinions on this. Although it was frustrating, I kind of, all oh, that guess, it was a must win, but after watching how the players played, it makes it a little bit easier to accept how the players actually look more like a functioning team, and that largely came down to Chelsea playing with wingers. That's right, two wingers. So let's get into the starting lineups and open that who scored graphic for further match context. Dean Smith went for continuity with his 4 2 3 1, but Frank Lampard went for many changes to basically kickstart a response and also give rested players a chance. Edouard Mendy started in goal and both second choice centre halves or the second choice centre half pairing in Christensen and Rudiger both started. As Piliqueta started at right back as we expected and Ben Chilwell started at left back which was a welcome sight considering how much work we did down that left hand flank. Jorginho started in the CDM role with N'Golo Kante up to his right, Mason Mount to his left. Yes, oh yes, two wingers. Callum to the door in the right wing doing some superb work work and Christian Pulisic on his native left wing with Olivier Giroud the goal scorer up front. Sub appearances from the two Germans, Kai Havertz coming in for Jorginho pushing Kante back into the CDM and of course Timo Werner down the middle where we want to see him but he still looks low on confidence. So off the bat I understand the rotations and the fact that we played with two wingers starting hudson Adoy playing uh, Timo Werner down the middle. A lot of people will be very happy that Lampard took that approach because the fans have been calling out for that. I must say personally I did think Zuma would start with Rudiger resting uh, Thiago Silva the 36 year old of course. I thought Zuma might be able to go again. I was shocked to see Frank switch both centre backs but other than that the full backs very very happy with especially considering Ben looked great and Mendy in goal of course who else are you going to start. Jorginho was a little bit of a shock but I don't think it was the worst thing in the world especially because Perhaps the plan was always to move Kante back to bring in Kai Havertz off the bench. Kai Havertz has looked great off the bench in the last three games now. And the front three, we can't have any qualms with really if you consider two wingers and a striker who scored. So the goal did come from Olivier Giroud. A great header, great assist from Ben Chilwell. Ben Chilwell was having the freedom of Stamford Bridge down that left-hand side, that left-hand flank. Uh, Traore playing right wing, what used to be a striker for Chelsea of course. Didn't look like he wanted a track back and do the defensive work to um, I believe it's Matty Cash as the fullback on that side to give him cover and help didn't track back throughout the whole game Chilwell was getting loads of joy 
we score the header and we do get a few chances in this game and we probably after an exciting and keenly contested first half go in deservedly in front. It didn't take too long into the second half where Chelsea concede the equaliser. Now, for me, this is quite a frustrating goal to concede. Basically, Grealish and Christensen both go in for a 50-50 and hit each other, and Christensen stays on the ground. Now, it turns out he was able to play on, so for me, I think he was trying to play for something on the ground. Like, maybe he wasn't, maybe he was in loads of pain, but when you're down for that long and then you just get up and play the rest of the match, I often think you're probably trying to sig signify to the ref or someone and while he's down there's the lack of cover in the centre back defensive area and we can see the goal El Ghazi finish. As Pulaqueta looks frustrated, he was overloaded, and it's very, very frustrating, and I have deja vu of Andreas Christensen going down and we conceding a goal in a previous game. Uh, Rudiger is okay as your sort of rotational choice, but I'm getting more and more frustrated with Andreas Christensen. Yes, we will go into player performances. Chelsea do come back into this game, put the pressure on. We had uh, so many corners in comparison to Aston Villa, so we were putting in loads of attempts, getting deflected corners, is trying to create chances and we did look more rigid I, I think I felt more vulnerable with the center backs more than anything else but in terms of playing as a team playing down the flanks the full backs the wingers the striker and Giroud scoring I felt pretty comfortable at least comfortable enough to know this was a game of football and we weren't on the ropes which has been the situation of late do you know what I mean until perhaps we fluke a goal and then our confidence raises and then we play to our potential anyway so let's go through player performances and talk a little bit about that. Eddie Mendy in goal, I can't really blame him too much for uh, the El Ghazi goal. He gets nutmegged, of course, but that happens often with goalkeepers. They have to spread their body and make it big, which makes them vulnerable to that. But besides that, I haven't actually been too convinced with Eduard Mendy. He obviously started so, so, so well for Chelsea, and he's been a little bit concerning of late. I don't think he was particularly bad in this game. He just doesn't have this air of presence, this confidence that he originally had when he came in. But you could say that for the whole of this Chelsea side uh, at the moment in lacking confidence so you know as Pilaqueta was very good he made a professional foul early doors got a yellow but he knew what he was doing um, it wasn't his fault there was a man down when we conceded the goal in my opinion 7 out of 10 whatever he's usually pretty good maybe he could have been a little bit better combinations in the final third but he's not Reese James we know that so I'm quite happy with him Rudiger was actually quite impressive for me he's a no nonsense defender at times he likes to kick the ball out he was doing a lot of long diagonals with his left boot and I was relatively impressed with him considering he hasn't played much football he came in and did all right so I was pleased enough with Antonio Rudiger now Andreas Christensen he was okay I suppose in open play I'd be keen to get your thoughts on this guys but that moment when he went down yes he's been kicked and he might be in pain but just get up man it's just you know get up you're vulnerable in transition the ball's being progressed up they concede the goal maybe I'm being unfair because I've seen this before with him on the ground but out of the two he was the most frustrating for me but Ben Chilwell was magnificent obviously the assist the assist for Giro and if he scored that volley in stoppage time like with like what 90 seconds to go when he hit that ball and it just whistled that would have been contender for goal of the season off the bat and it, it was close as well he didn't just hit that wayward that was close he met it so sweetly yes he assisted the goal but he had the freedom of Stamford Bridge and he had he saw I believe 50% of our attacks came down the left hand flank so he saw a lot of ball Jorginho was demanding the ball a lot in the first half he always wanted to make himself available and play through what is a relatively good Aston Villa press so he was very good at that I can understand why Frank Lampard chose him in the first half when they've got more energy to play out of the press and he was okay at that but perhaps a little bit uninspiring another player I'd be really keen to get your thoughts and opinions on but he was okay uh, and Golo Kante he had a couple of opportunities shots on goal he obviously scuffed both of them but it's in Golo Kante a little bit frustrating one of them he met he opened up his foot and he could have done a little bit better tackled well good battle with Grealish uh, obviously moved back down to CDM when Kai Havertz came on. So-so, not vintage Kante, but pretty decent in what was a difficult game. Mason Mount was a threat, playing down that left-hand flank between the lines, often combining with Ben Chilwell. Well, you know, when people like Werner and Havertz, not so much Havertz lately, had been low on confidence, they don't combine quickly. You know with Mason Mount, he's gonna release the ball quickly. He knows what the Premier League's about. He's good at combining in the final third. And I thought he was pretty decent, but I would have been interested to see maybe he was brought off and something else was tried, maybe if he was tired, but I'm not so sure. I don't think he did anything wrong, personally. Pulisic was great, man. He's, he just looks like 
a threat. As long as he's on the pitch, he'll always be a threat. Even if he gets tired, he'll be a threat. I think a goal would do him a lot of good, but it's the sort of collective low confidence of the team at the moment. He looks great, Pulisic. Um, he's an amazing player. He's a, he was our best attacking player last season. Uh, give him a goal, another couple of goals. Let the team settle, start combining better, and I think he'll explode. Giroud did what he was asked, as he always does. Scores a goal. But it's a difficult one with Giroud, because even though he got the header and he scored a goal, he obviously got a little bit aggy towards the end. You kind of feel like, right, is he contributing that much to the play? Like, did he contribute that much to the play in the first half? Does an informed Timo Werner play way better than him and we just dominate the game? He gets the goal, his hold up play is good, but I just have this sense that when he's playing, we're not optimised. This might be a bit unfair, so apologies if you think that's unfair, but I'm pleased he got his goal and obviously he got us a point. And on the right wing, Callum hudson Adoy, for my money, the best player on the pitch in the first half, dynamic, threatening. He obviously went out super concentrated and I'm very pleased to see the progression of Callum hudson Adoy. Again, just creating chances and looking positive. Um, Kai Havertz, good, good off the bench. He did get, um, he wasn't too much time on the ball a couple of times, but he did a couple of deft touches, little tricks. He looks like a quality player. There is an absolute Galactico in Kai Havertz just waiting to express himself. And off the bench the last three games, I've been pleased with how he's looked. So that's good. Basically, he, when the opposition's more tired, he gets afforded more time on the ball, and we're in business. <laughs> it's a bit unfair, but you know, Timo Werner had a chance to win it, uh, put it over. It wasn't the easiest chance, but it's the kind of chance that Timo Werner in form that we know from Leipzig and maybe even the beginning of the season would put away. Didn't, I don't know, didn't get in on the ball that much. Kai Havertz was more impressive for me. So I really want to know what you guys thought of this game. Let me know your thoughts and opinions on the performance. Yes, the result is ultimately not good. The point doesn't do us much, but we have to sort of be pragmatic and look at what the team's doing on the pitch. They played better even though it was heavily rotated. Um, we're happier with the wingers. Werner went down the middle. Kai Havertz came on, looks good. There's stuff you've got to be happy with there. You know, Ben Chilwell looks back in form. It's just Aston Villa are really good at the moment. You know, their recent form in the last five games is pretty darn incredible. So you have to sort of take that into account, especially off Chelsea's poor uh, performance prior. So what do you guys think? I'm keen to hear it. Get down in the comment section below. If you've enjoyed the content, drop a like. It really does help me out a lot. Consider subscribing if you're new. Enjoy the football and I'll see you later. You ain't so tough with that bad boy tuck. I'ma get it how I'm living. I'ma walk the walk. Outline my lines. I rap through thought. Body bag the verse. Outline the chalk. In my life seen trouble, hustle on the double, silence on the trigger like my pick got a muzzle, yo chick like to guzzle, bad boy stay in trouble, I only love this paper, sorry I don't I love me baby.